China just discovered a new lunar mineral that might solve the problems on Earth rather than the ones on the Moon. Nuclear fusion comes with several scientific hurdles as it consumes more energy than what it produces. But it looks like a new lunar mineral, discovered by the Chinese National Space Agency, might just change the future of nuclear fusion reactors. So what is this new mineral all about? Will China have a total monopoly over this new mineral? Well, that's exactly what we find out in this video today. So make sure to stick around till the end to know a lot more about this new lunar mineral discovered by China. Nuclear fusion reactors are considered to be one of those perfect energy sources, with proponents even claiming that the commercial fusion reactors would produce vast amounts of energy, with very little to no radioactive waste. These fusion reactors will not generate those dangerous runaway chain reactions that would lead to a meltdown. This means that all the drawbacks that we have with the current nuclear fission are totally eliminated. Fusion nuclear reactors, just like nuclear fission, will have the enormous benefit of producing energy without emitting any carbon that warms up our planet's atmosphere. But it comes at a huge cost, and atoms splitting into two to produce energy like what happens with fission is relatively straightforward and easy. But there's a huge scientific challenge to fuse two hydrogen nuclei together to create helium isotopes like what occurs with fusion. Nuclear fusion is what powers the sun because of all the favorable conditions in the sun. But to replicate something of this scale on our planet is a humongous task because we don't have the intense pressure created by gravity of the sun's core. So to make things work right here, you need temperatures of at least 100 million degrees Celsius or anything six times hotter than the sun. All the experiments that we have done so far have been a failure because the energy input required to produce the temperatures and pressures that enable significant fusion reactions in hydrogen isotopes has always far exceeded the fusion energy generated, which defeats the purpose of using nuclear fusion to produce energy. But there's a lot of research to make nuclear fusion a reality, even though scaling down what happens on the sun is no easy task. We are already closer to that reality as the Chinese scientists have discovered a new mineral in the samples that were returned from the moon by the Chang-5 mission. This mineral is extremely special because it might be able to change the course of nuclear energy. Minerals are naturally occurring and the Earth is already home to 5,000 types of minerals, including diamond and silica. Some of what we already have on Earth is also found on the moon. Back in December of 2020, the Chinese National Space Administration Chang'e 5 mission landed on the moon and collected about 3.8 pounds of lunar material. The samples were then returned to Earth, and this also marked the very first retrieval of moon material ever since the 1970s. For further research, the agency had to distribute these samples to 100 groups. That's when the Beijing Research Institute of Uranium Geology managed to isolate a single particle of Change Site Y from the sample. Change Site Y is the sixth mineral discovered on the moon by humankind, and the first new mineral discovered on moon by China. This makes China the third country in the world after the United States and Russia to discover a lunar mineral. This new mineral is a colorless, transparent, and columnar crystal. The Chinese scientists have discovered this mineral in the samples returned from the moon as a part of the Chang'e 5 mission, followed by an analysis of lunar basalt particles by a research team from the Beijing Research Institute of Uranium Geology, which happens to be a subsidiary of the China National Nuclear Corporation. The Change Site Y has been officially approved as a new mineral by the Commission on New Minerals, Nomenclature and Classification of the International Mineralogical Association. The mission was launched way back in on November 24, 2020, and returned with samples from the lunar near side on December 17th of the same year. If you think this was an easy process, well, that is not the case because the research institute had to use several high-tech processes to isolate this new mineral to separate it from 14,000 other particles in the sample, and the mineral is just one-tenth as wide as a human hair. Learning more about the lunar rocks will help us uncover the mysteries surrounding the moon's history and its current composition. The discovery of this new mineral will have more impact on Earth than on the moon itself, all thanks to the composition of Changes Site Y, which contains helium-3, an isotope of helium that's extremely rare on Earth. But this helium-3 is available in abundance on the moon as much as 1.1 million metric tons in the first several meters of the lunar surface, according to several reports. Helium-3 is not radioactive, so nuclear fusion reactors in the future will be able to generate energy if we have the technology to make nuclear fusion work to provide a viable source of clean energy. The world is already transitioning to renewable sources of energy, but most of the renewable sources of energy that we have today are intermittent, which means they cannot be generated all year round. They can only be generated during certain months of the year depending on the season. All of this will be fixed by a nuclear fusion reactor. So what is the next big step? Well, the answer to that would be moon mining where companies will develop technologies to mine this new mineral from the lunar surface and send it back to Earth to produce energy. The cost associated with this might make a lot of sense because just 40 metric tons of this isotope could power the US for more than a year. With the discovery of this new mineral, 
China is also pushing its boundaries as they are already entering to the next phase of the lunar missions as approved by the Chinese government. The production of the Chang'e 6 probe has almost been completed. To better understand the moon, given that Chang'e 4 went to the far side of the moon for the first time, we, after discussions with engineers and scientists, decided to have the Chang'e 6 probe to retrieve samples from the far side of the moon and return them to Earth. So the samples will be much more valuable. Liu Jizong, director of Lunar Exploration and Space Program Center, was quoted as saying by CGTN. Fun fact, even today, NASA is using the samples from the Apollo missions of the past, because during the 1969 and 1972, NASA collected more than 2,200 samples or about 382 kilograms of lunar rocks, which includes pebbles, core samples, sand, and dust, and the agency very recently unsealed one of its remaining samples in order to prepare themselves for the Artemis mission to the moon. So what exactly is the Artemis program? Well, the NASA will be sending the first woman and the first man of color onto the southern part of the lunar surface to explore the moon and lay groundwork for sending astronauts to Mars. NASA is working with SpaceX to make this happen with this and the world's most powerful rocket ever built, the Starship will be used for this lunar mission. Maybe with the Starship, we could fix the logistic part of sending this mineral to Earth from the moon, and that might finally solve the energy crisis that we have on our planet. China has already made a number of leads in the lunar exploration space ever since the beginning of its robotic moon program in 2004. The nation has successfully launched a pair of orbiters, then a lander and a rover, and conducted the only far-side lunar landing to date. Most recently, the country executed a complex sample return mission, the moon. The Chinese government also approved three robotic moon missions that will lay the groundwork for a permanent lunar orbit based on Mars. The Chang'e mission is already in development and is progressing really well. The next spacecraft, the Chang'e 6, is almost complete. The Chang'e 5 was successful, so the spacecraft is now being repurposed for the first ever attempted collection of sample from the far side of the moon. Chang'e 7 will target the lunar south pole, and the mission will consist of an orbital lander, rover, relay satellite, and a small detector that can hop into craters to hunt for water. Then you have the Chang'e 8, which will be launched later in the decade, and it is also intended to test technologies for 3D printing using local resources. China is also working on a project named the International Lunar Research Station in collaboration with Russia for the 2030s, and the country is also seeking more partners to join their endeavor. If all of this sounds exciting, then the future is bright for space exploration. Maybe we could finally find answers to questions that we always asked. New samples that are collected from different locations on the moon will expand our existing knowledge of our own planet, the moon, its reserves, and geological evolution. Even though most of the sampling done so far has only targeted the central part of the near side of the moon, the exact same hemisphere that faces the Earth. 